Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in this video, my primary goal is to start refamiliarizing myself with the XR2 Raven Star. I absolutely love this craft. Um, I think it's, I think it's amazing, and I think it makes Orbiter uh, a whole lot more fun. So that's uh, mainly what I want to do. And I also dug out my old Thrustmaster Hotas, whatever this thing is to hook it up because as I said in my other videos I think uh, flying with the granularity that the joystick gives you is a lot more fun than you know trying to press keyboard buttons that are either on or off so with all that said I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the uh, full screen here I've already gone through prior to the video and did just a little bit of setup so that we could get flying right away because I've already gone through in the in the one of the earlier series with you know all the mission planning for taking off and uh, we're gonna going to be going to the ISS in this mission again I plan on doing things just a little bit different than I did in the first mission uh, once again I put my heart rate monitor on just because I think it's kind of amusing uh, with all that said let's go ahead warp time forward to get to the launch period uh, I'm using launch MFD this time and the time to intersections thousand seconds away so we're pretty close to launch so I'm just going to warp time forward, get down to about 300 seconds. And then we're going to take off with our usual uh, 43 degree heading. Let me actually think about that for a second. So I'm going to have to take off and kind of almost do a 180. All right. So we're about 550 seconds out. Oops. I forgot that I left the APU running. Let me go ahead and shut it off for the next 200 seconds. I did have it shut off the entire time I was setting up the the launch window, but then here, just in the last thousand seconds, I turned it on and forgot to turn it back off. But we're about 450 seconds away, so really close now since we're using time warp. We'll back out of time warp at about 320. How about here and I will try to do a scram ascent on this uh, flight which may just end in complete failure <laughs> but I think I remember the basics of it all right well it's about time to launch so hopefully I'm not forgetting anything uh, if so we'll pick it up on the ride <laughs> full throttle on the main knots. I have messed around a little bit with the XR2 since installing it just to make sure that it would work. All right, so there's a rotate call out. Pitch back. And I bound one of my joystick keys to the gear. All right, yeah, this feels way better flying with the joystick. You don't really need a throttle. I do have a throttle on this joystick, a dedicated throttle. Uh, unit but yeah you don't I don't really care about that so much but the joystick just makes the flying just so much smoother I, I have another joystick in the back that I don't really use because I've always liked this ho uh, this Thrustmaster Hotas whatever it is I was actually looking them up on Amazon just out of curiosity the price of this thing has skyrocketed I paid $39 for this I think and uh, yeah, the price is now like over a hundred. Um, but I think I think they discontinued it. I think that's why it's so high. Let me go ahead and bring up a line plane, which I completely forgot to do. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, pitch steeply so we can climb up out of the thicker part of the atmosphere. And time to know it's coming down. So I think everything's pretty well set. I honestly don't remember the velocity. <clears throat> where I would normally switch over to scram. I want to say it was like Mach 2.5. But uh, we'll go ahead and we'll do a scram ascent, or at least we'll try to. And hopefully, you know, as long as I pay attention to the, the thermals, I should be able to get into orbit okay. And I want to say it was somewhere around 10 kilometers where I would start to level off to get some horizontal acceleration and preparation for scram ascent. I need to go back and look at some of those old videos to get the timings down better. 
So there's Mach 2, and again, I want to say it was like between Mach 2 and Mach 3 where I would switch over to Scram. So that's probably about now, give or take. So now I'm going to go ahead and open the Scram doors. And then bring up the Scram engines and kill the main throttle. Alright, so we are gaining speed. Now we have to keep a close watch on our temperatures. I love the XR2. It is such a fun, such a fun vessel. It just looks really slick, reminiscent a bit of the XR, uh, the SR71 Blackbird. I think I even read that the design of the XR2 Raven Star was. Uh, highly inspired by the SR-71 Blackbird. So let's uh, bank a bit to slow down our rate of relative, inc relative inclination rate because our time to the node is uh, still 110 seconds out. All right, watching our temperatures. Now, when I would do the speed runs, I would try to keep the scram engines red hot. Don't necessarily want to do that for this flight, but I think they are more efficient when they're hot. Not red hot, but hot. <clears throat> so I'll try to keep the uh, I'll try to keep the the temperatures up there a bit without overdoing it. I can see in a line plane my uh, time to the node is, or actually I guess launch MFD time to intersection has that as well. It's about 60 seconds out, and our rate is, uh, you know, counting down, and we're about three degrees out. So everything's looking pretty good, I think. Let me watch those thermals, because the one thing about the uh, the overheating is you don't get much notice. It's just. Uh, one, one moment you're okay and the next moment you're burning up so you gotta really pay close attention to it. I'm gonna roll a bit to the left though because I don't want my rate to increase. So we're about half orbital velocity here. Pretty, oh, there's the call out. How's my heart rate? Oh, okay, I, I feel comfortable. My heart's not pounding bringing the XR2 up to orbit. All right, let's uh, go ahead and roll a bit to the left. Increase our rate a bit to get on, pl get in plane, because we're now going to be crossing the node here really shortly. And I'll go ahead and pitch up as well to really bring that rate quickly down. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, the uh, the sky looks a lot nicer. Um, I don't think it's just uh, confirmation bias or anything like that. I really do think it looks better in this version. The cloud layers and all that. I'm going to start slowly rolling out so I don't overshoot the uh, my target relative inclination. We're getting pretty close to zero. Alright, let's start rolling out a bit more. And now we just have to fly that razor's edge to keep our rate, keep our relative inclination down nice and low. I can definitely feel the the slipperiness uh, up at this altitude. Uh, my controls are not as tight. So pretty soon we'll probably have to switch over to RCS mode. I used to have a I used to have one of the joystick buttons bound, I think, to do that. Especially when I was doing the speed runs to Wide Awake International, uh, reaching down for the keyboard was really, really difficult. So I tried to bind all the important keys to the joystick. Uh, I still have all that keyboard binding information saved, but I don't have the joystick currently set up the way I used to. But Okay, it looks like we're going to get through all of our scram fuel, which is, uh, I guess that's good. Mach 
All right, full power on the main, close the scram doors. And now there's no, re no need to be down this low in the atmosphere, so we'll go ahead and climb out to higher, cooler air. Gonna have to start paying real real close attention to orbital velocity here because I don't want to end up with an APA oh, of a million or something like that. So with that in mind, let me switch this over to orbit HUD, change the projection to the ship, change the distance readout, and okay, so we're about 68, 69. Roll just a bit here, bring down that relative inclination, start bringing down the main engine slowly because we're 100 APA, 24. bring down the main engine a bit more, Mark 130, 25. 140, bring down the main just a bit more, 150, 165, bring down the main. Gonna go for a target of 200 again. Mach 26. And this time we'll see if we can actually hit it. Okay, so there's our target more or less. And, uh, you know, because we are still just a, we have just a little bit of gas affecting our vessel, a little bit of nitrogen helium, hydrogen, whatever it is up at the 80 kilometer mark, so we still have just a little bit of dynamic pressure. So I'm still going to try to fly the vessel just a little bit as an airplane until we get it just a little bit higher. Okay, so I can let go of all the controls, and I'm going to turn off the... AF controls, switch over to RCS. Go ahead and extend the radiator now. I think we're okay to do that. Yep, 90 kilometers should be fine. And then we're going to turn off the APU as soon as the radiator finishes extending out. All right, get rid of some of that background noise. And now I'm just going to slide my joystick out of the way and pull the keyboard so that it's a bit more accessible. All right, so uh, we're essentially in orbit. Let me switch over to these larger MFDs that are easier to see. And we'll switch our HUD from surface to orbit. And we arrived in orbit uh, with a really good relative inclination. We wouldn't even have to make any refinement on that. Uh, again, we are coming up to the ascending node here pretty quickly. Uh, we'll, we will get to, to the ascending node before we'll reach apoapsis. So uh, what I'll plan on doing is uh, going into the, the prograde position here. And we won't bother uh, pitching the vessel down for the, for the burn to correct our relative inclination because it's just too small of an amount to bother with. So we'll just use linear translation to take care of that once we reach the node. And then very shortly thereafter, we'll reach apoapsis and circularize our orbit. Now I do plan on handling the rendezvous a bit differently. Um, I've already done uh, rendezvous using sync orbit a couple of times now. I'm comfortable with that and I want to get more uh, more familiar with Transex, and I know that um, I've, I was always able to use Transex to do rendezvous. So that's that's going to be the plan for this mission: is to use Transex instead of instead of Sync Orbit. All right, let's go ahead and warp time forward to get over to the node. We're going to get right up to it before we do any kind of maneuver because uh, the amount of estimated thrust is super low. All right, we're pretty close to that point, so we'll use the autopilot to get back into proper prograde. Give it a moment to settle. 
Alright, and I don't think the autopilot will fight me, but I'm going to turn it off just in case, and we're going to use a bit of eight to push our vessel down. Bring that estimated thrust all the way down to zero, bring our relative inclination all the way down to zero. And there we go. And generally I will also uh, spin this line so that it's more or less perpendicular to the uh, to the A N D N line because I feel like that is when you're most perfect. All right, so we're done with the line plane at least for now. So let's bring up um, burn time calculator on this side, and we're going to change the mode over to apoapsis, and press the circularize button so that it will take care of the orbit circularization circularization for us here in just about four minutes. But we'll just time warp through that. Okay, we're really close to that point, so we're going to turn the prograde autopilot on, even though we're looks like we were already there. Time warp up through the circularization burn. Okay, so there we are. We have a nice stable orbit, so we don't have to worry about um, you know, falling out of the sky anytime soon. So let's take a look at map MFD really quick. Um, I'm already targeting the ISS, I think. Yeah. Oh, I'm in such perfect plane with it already that I'm like, where's it at? Well, it's because my line's overlying the other one. So let me... Uh, let me bring up the ComNav info really quick just to get that dialed in so that I don't forget to do that later. So we'll go to Vessel ISS and the long range transponder is 13130, so let's dial that in. 13130. I feel like this mission should already have that stuff set up since the since the quick save says that you're ready to go to the ISS. So I feel like I feel like at least the long-range transponder should already be dialed in, but it's not. All right, so port one is 137.40. And let's uh, set up port two as well, 137.30. And if I thought about it, I would have taken care of that stuff as well uh, before I ever started the video. All right, let's bring up uh, Transex and so for view setup, we want to change target from planets, moons to ships. And then for plus plus, we're just going to type in ISS as our target. Now, this particular view has, uh, you know, has this kind of, uh, it's not, it's not really what I want to see for trying to rendezvous. So I'm going to switch from, I'm going to go through the variables. And this is what I'm looking for, graph projection. I think we have a couple of options, but uh, focus is pretty much what I've had in mind. So let's choose that. Now, I want to, I want to try to, I, I, once again, I would like to try to set up the rendezvous time where I'm in sunlight. I'm not as clear off the top of my head how to do that in Transex, but I think it's basically the same idea because you can see that where this line is indicating is the same on Warped MFD so so if I look at map so our current position is here so when we get to here I kind of want to see where my orbit line is at as compared to, uh, so, so I'm going to fast forward time. Let me just check something. I did open the radiator, didn't I? Now, one thing I used to do in Orbiter 2010, there was an option for ambient light where you could have the, even, even when you're on the dark side of the planet, you could have the ambient light set such that you could actually see what you were doing in the complete darkness. Now, this is undoubtedly more realistic, but I would still prefer to turn on that ambient light. However, in order 2016, 
raising the ambient light level doesn't do anything and I turned it all the way up to 255 and it just doesn't do anything so if anybody knows let me know anyway I'm gonna fast forward until I'm getting into sunlight okay so I can't so my idea is that this is where I would like to do the rendezvous. So in other words, right about here. So what is that? Like the, you know, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock. So about like 1 o'clock position. So that means I want to raise this side of my orbit if, I, if I'm thinking in terms of uh, catching up to the ISS around this point. So essentially I want to be down here when I do the maneuver. All right. So now let me view over to maneuver, turn maneuver mode on, and I know the first thing I'm going to need to do is just raise the other, the other side of my orbit, which will actually be this side that I'm at right now. I want to raise this side of my orbit, but I'll move the date ahead so that I'm over here when I, when I plan on doing that. We, it's been a while since I've used TransX to do this, so I may just have to take any particular rendezvous that I find, but all right, let's go down to, we don't need a whole bunch of, of velocity, maybe a bit more than that. And what I'm trying to do right now is just raise, it's a little hard to see, but there's these perforated lines that indicate your, that indicate your, like your hypothetical orb, orbit. So I'm just trying to raise those until they appear to be covering up the the orbit of the ISS and that seems to me like that's now okay so now I'm gonna switch over to date and we're only going to be adjusting the date by mm, seconds minutes maybe hours so we want to be down to like an ultra setting and my original thinking was that I would try to do that burn here like on this side so that I'm raising that side of my orbit so that I'm in the daylight when when the when the maneuver is done however at this particular at this particular time we're nowhere even close to the ISS so we're just gonna have to go around you know maybe a few orbits but but I am thinking that I want to make sure that I do the burn on this side so let me just I'm just kind of putting my finger there on the screen and right now I'm just warping time or moving the maneuver date out into the future and hopefully my hopefully I will be able to intercept the ISS when I can do the burn on the other side of the planet from where I'm at right now so that we can rendezvous during the day but if it doesn't work out that way I'm not gonna worry about it too much So it looks like either so that the two lines converged a little while ago, so they're not quite converging here. Let me back that up and let me see where they last converged. Okay, so they're converging about right there. Hmm. Let me think about this. Five two, so that would be like tomorrow, but no, no, that's not right. The because this here is showing my hypothetical orbit being raised at this point, so these lines converging is not what I'm looking for. Th this must be the line of the ISS that I can't tell because they all look identical. So let me just, let me actually adjust a little more. Yeah, I can't tell which line is which because, again, they all look identical. I just know that, if possible, I would like to do the burn when I'm down here. I mean, it doesn't have to be exactly at that point. So let me adjust down to a finer setting. so they're starting to come together and it looks like as luck would have it I will be able to do the burn 
on the other side because you can see here the closest approach is down to 134 uh, kilometers so let's start getting things a bit closer we should still be in daylight at that point okay so I think we're pretty close there let me adjust down to a micro and back up actually let's go back to hyper back up a little bit and and try to get the rendezvous somewhere at that point and we should be able to do that just by adjusting a little bit on the and I, every time I go around a base orbit update I want to do plus plus just to like update the universe basically so now if I fiddle around with the prograde I should be able to dial in at this point right here so let's back off the prograde So it seems like we're pretty close right around there. So let me go back to the date for a second. And then back to prograde. And back to date. Let's update the universe. And then back to prograde. And then back to date. So that would be good enough right there, one kilometer out. But the thing I like about Transex is that you can set up your plan so that it will drive you right through the dead center <laughs> of the ISS if that's your goal. As you can see, you know, now we're pretty much driving through the living room of the ISS. So that's that's quite nice. So let's take that adjustment down a little bit. And, you know, here we're just within a few meters of accuracy. All right, so that, I think that's going to be our plan. Let me go ahead and pause the simulation. Switch over to the overlay. So as you can see, uh, using, using Transex, I have a, a plan that's going to take us straight to the ISS. And the nice thing is that, you know, we didn't have to fiddle around with, you know, using... Uh, using orbit MFD to like set a high point and set a low point and do all that messing about. So a transex is, is actually just a little bit easier even in my opinion than doing sync, or, sync orbit and using orbit MFD and all that. However, I do think it's important to do those other methods because I think you learn a little bit, uh, I think you get a little bit more of a grasp on what's actually happening by, by using those other tools. But once you understand those tools, um, I think using Transex makes things just a little bit nicer and gives you a bit more flexibility. So with all that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this part of the video here, and I will see you in the next part.